Hello, I'm going to be going, going through um, a narrative input chart for the book Born on the Water. And I wanted to just show you the vocabulary first. Normally this would be the, um, the first reading and then the second time I read through this, I would target this vocabulary, but I thought it might be kind of neat to put the vocabulary at the first part. So um, here we go. Vocabulary for this is equality. The White Lion, Transatlantic Slave Trade, Kwanzaa River, Ancestral Land, Mayflower, Generations, Legacy, Point Comfort, Ashamed, Europe, Weary, Kingdom of Ndongo, Kimbundu, Virginia, Black Lives Matter, Black Girl Magic, Illegal, Democracy, Harvesting, Roots, Resist, Worldly, Resistance, New World, Portuguese, Ancestor, labor, immigration, marimbas, mourn, ancient, bloodlines, and cherished. And what I would do is I would take each of these words and I would have them on my whiteboard with a little magnet. And then um, I would read, have the students read them. We talk about which words they know, which words they don't know. And then I would have my students um, look up um, with a dictionary online the words that they're unsure of, the definitions for them. And that way they would be ready to read the story and they would know these words. And they could even do some predictions about what do they think the story is going to be about. So that those are the vocabulary words. Those are I I got those from the website for the 1619 project. They have a curriculum guide um, that goes with the book, um, which made my life really easy. <laughs> I love it when that happens. So here um, is the story. So born on the water, and this is by Nicole Hannah Jones and Renee Watson. Question. My teacher gives us an assignment. Who are you, she asks. Trace your roots. Draw a flag that represents your ancestral land. Most of my classmates can count back many generations and learn about the country where their families came from. They draw their flags, but I leave mine blank. I do not know where I begin, what my story is. At home, Grandma asks, how was school? I tell her about the assignment, how I couldn't finish it, how I can only count back three generations here in this country where my parents, my grandparents, and my great-grandparents were born. But before that, I don't know. I tell her that I am ashamed. Grandmother gathers the whole family, says, come, let me tell you our beginning. Let me tell you where we're from. What Grandma tells me. They say our people were born on the water, but our people had a home, a place, a land before they were sold. 400 years ago in 1619, our ancestors were taken and brought here on a ship called the White Lion a whole year before the Mayflower arrived. But before that dreadful voyage, there was a time when they did not pray for freedom. There was a time when they did not sing about overcoming. Their story does not begin with whips and chains. They had a home, a place, a land, a beginning. Their story is our story. Before they were enslaved, they were free. They had a language. They spoke Kimbundu. They had their own words for love, for friend, for family. The kingdom of Ndongo was nestled between the Lukala and the Kwanzaa rivers on a high, high plateau in West Central Africa. The people were good with their hands knew the power of a seed, how to plant it, water it, how to make it, make something out of nothing. The people were good with their minds, good at math and science. They used shells for money, counting, recording, trading. They knew what their work was worth. They spoke Kimbundu. 
they had their own words for joy, for grow, for home. Their hands had a knowing. Their hands had a knowing. They knew how to hold a baby close, how to rock the child to keep her from crying. Their hands knew just how to mix herbs, how to get the just right flavor for a meal. Their hands knew how to beat and twist and shape iron, how to make gardening tools, armor, and weapons. Their hearts had a knowing. They knew how to make joyful, make work joyful, how to create rhythm by pounding the tools against metal, knew how to make music to keep them company as they worked. Their minds had a knowing, worldly, curious, sharp. When they met white people, they learned quick, taught their tongues to speak Portuguese, taught their eyes to read strange words. They knew how to mix the old with the new, how even an ancient people always had more to learn. They, and they danced. And the people moved their feet, moved their whole bodies to the melody of horns and stringed instruments of marimbas and drums. They danced to celebrate, to mourn. They danced as a way of worship to offer thanks. Their bodies a song under open sky and bright sun. Their bodies swaying testament to the beauty of creation. Stolen. And white people took them anyway, kidnapped them, baptized them in the name of their God, stamped them with new names, ours is no immigration story. They did not get to pack bags stuffed with cherished things, with the doll grandmama had woven from tall grass, with the baby blanket handed down from generation to generation all the way back, so far back that it carried the scent of the ancestors. They could not hug their fathers and mothers, daughters and sons, hearts thumping in rhythm, clinging to that final sweetness before the parting. No promises whispered from mouth to ear of seeing each other soon, just wails and sobs, confusion and wrists worn raw from shackles made of iron, feet split and bloody from the 200 mile march along the Kwanzaa River. They had no things, but they had their minds, the old ways, the harvest songs, the just right mix of herbs etched in their memories. They had their bodies, histories and bloodlines and drums pulsing in their veins, with trembling fingers, they braided seeds into their hair, defiantly hiding tiny pieces of home to plant one day in new soils. No matter what some say, the people fought, and the white people took them anyway, forced them into the bottom of an evil ship to sail to the new world they had no desire to see. Ours is no immigration story. The White Lion no one knows how long it took before they knew they would never see Ndongo again, never run along the high, high plateau, or throw their head backs and giggles with their best friends. Maybe it was the second month or the third when they had not seen their land or any land. For so many days, they could no longer count. Some could not bear the pain. They refused to eat. They shut their mouths until their hearts gave out. Others tossed themselves into the teal eternity of the Atlantic Ocean, swimming one last time with the ancestors. Sickness and hunger, filth and cruelty took the others, almost half. But those who did not die resolved to live, no matter what. Packed in dark misery, strangers chained together, head to feet, hip to hip, in the bottom of a ship called the White Lion. They saw these strangers, men, women, children, kidnapped too. These were their people now. These many people became one people, a new people. And that is why people say we were born on the water. We come from the people who refused to die. Point comfort. Finally, the ship stopped moving and the people were dragged to the deck. They closed their eyes against the light of the sun they had not seen since Mother Africa's coast. They closed their eyes against the sight of a land that was not theirs. They cried a silent cry as white men spoke strange words, taking their bodies, and with a handshake, traded another chi another's child, another's mama and daddy, 20 to 30 beloved human beings in all, for a few pounds of food and drink. 400 years ago, in the year 1619, 
the white people called this land Virginia, a sweet sounding word for a place of such pain, a sweet sounding word for the place where American slavery began. Tobacco fields. From sunup to sundown, the people worked the fields, growing and harvesting tobacco. The crops were sold to Europe, bringing wealth to Virginia, but the enslaved people did not get anything in return for their labor. The people worked and worked. When the people grew weary, they remembered their yesterdays, remembered their songs from Ndongo, sang them to ease their spirits. As they sang, they looked into the future, hoped for better days, planted prayers into heaven, praying, praying, praying for freedom. How to make a home. After a long day's work planting tobacco in fields after brutal treatment, after nothing to show for their hands work, sadness would come, a longing for Ndongo, for the mamas, for the daddies, for the friends. They could no longer hug and talk under the warm sun. We are in a strange land, they said, but we are here and we will make this home. We have our songs, our recipes, our know-how. We have our joy. We will love, laugh, sing, and hug our children as tight as you can hold a child. We will survive because we have each other. And so the people planted the seeds they'd carried over the ocean, snuck to visit one another in the dark of night, sang songs, swapped tales of yesterday, remembering, remembering. And the people planned planted dreams of hope, willed themselves to keep living, living, and the people learned new words for love, for friend, for family, for joy, for grow, for home. We are in a strange land, they said, but we are here and we will make this home. We have determination, imagination, faith. We will survive because we have each other. The Tuckers of Tidewater, Virginia, 1624. Anthony and Isabella enslaved on the plantation of Captain William Tucker and his wife Mary Tucker, two ordinary people forced to till the soil, forced to build a country they were not from, found a way to build a love for each other, to marry and create a family, a legacy. They didn't know their family would be the start of a new people. They were just two ordinary people who had a son, a new beginning, a promise to live on and on. William Tucker, hope is a promise, faith that a better day will come, belief that things are not will not always be this way. Hope is refusal to give up, to die out. Hope is a child born. Way back then, hope had a name, William Tucker. He was born to ordinary people, a man and a woman, who were not free, but who believed that one day freedom would come, even if they never saw it. These two ordinary people gave life to an extraordinary child a child not of Africa, a child not of Europe, nor of the native peoples already here, but a child of the new people formed on the water, the first black child born in the land that would become the United States, the first true American child. Resist. Life was hard and it would get harder for the generations to come. White people told the people they were not human that the people were things to be bought and sold and given as gifts, alongside horses and chairs. When the people were beaten, they said people did not feel pain. When they sold the people's children, they said the people didn't love. These were lies they made up so they could feel okay about slavery. It is wrong, always and forever to own human beings. It is wrong, always and forever to treat human beings like things. The people fought back for 250 years the people resisted every day in ways big and small. For 250 years, the biggest resistance of all was the people kept living. Legacy. And the people who were born on the water survived, kept living and living. It was illegal to teach enslaved people how to read, but they birthed generations of teachers and librarians, scholars and authors. They were brokenhearted, beaten, and bruised, but they became healers, pastors, and activists, doctors, and counselors. No one could steal the people's joy. They wrote songs, created jazz and hip-hop, rhythm and blues. They became inventors and athletes, 
nurses and cooks, pilots and architects, farmers and housekeepers, singers and artists, dancers and poets, mathematicians and scientists. They passed on their stories through the stitch of a quilt, shared secret messages through songs. The people survived, the people fought. And because the people survived and because the people fought, they finally got freedom. And because the people survived and because the people fought, America began to live up to its promise of democracy. It is the people who fight for this democracy still. Pride. Grandma looks at me and my brother, tells us this is why we say Black Lives Matter, why we celebrate Black Girl Magic, why we believe that we are our ancestors' wildest dreams. Never forget, we are their hope. Never forget, you come from a people of great strength, Grandma says. Be proud of our story, your story. The next day I go to school, pull out my red crayon, my blue, and my white. I draw the stars and I draw the stripes of the flag of the country that my ancestors built, that my grandma and grandpa built, that I will help build too. And I'm not ashamed. I know what my story is, where I'm from, where I begin. Oh, this is such a great story. So this is this. And I just want to go ahead and flip through so you can see the art from this. But I hope you enjoyed this story. The cover is just absolutely gorgeous. And so here are the pictures. Some of them might look familiar. Wonderful story. And I'm really excited because there's a chapter book that I just ordered that should be arriving. So it's going to give me even more information. And I feel like it would be really fun to have some music from Andongo, maybe even playing in the background while you read this story. To have some art up as well. To read some of the um, first-hand accounts that were collected from people that were enslaved. And also to celebrate that culture from before. Um, I think is really powerful and very necessary. And this, the way that they have this book written in poetry is just absolutely gorgeous. And I know my students really love poetry. And so this will be a really powerful way to connect what we are learning on poetry. See? A couple more pictures left in this book. And some of these will look familiar from the pictures you saw during, but some of them I just could not quite get. And yep, yeah, and then there's the last one. So I highly recommend this book. And I hope you guys enjoyed. Bye.